Welcome to Universal Light Christian Center, the city of light. Our founder and lead pastor is Reverend Gail Talbert Smith. ULCC is a radiant, multi-generational gathering of believers who are dedicated, demonstrative, and determined to spread light, love, and hope throughout the world. There's always something exciting happening at ULCC. Youth and young adults, Yaya Sunday is October 25th. It's your voice, it's your faith, it's your style, it's your Sunday, it's your story. Join us on YouTube Sunday, October 25th at 9 a.m. for Yaya Sunday. It is your voice, your faith, your style on YouTube Sunday, October 25th at 9 a.m. ULCC Sunday, November 8th is Temple Celebration in the City of Light. This is also our Clergy Appreciation Sunday. It is the Sunday where we appreciate the hard work and the effort of our clergy and our deacons. And it is the Sunday where we begin to prepare for our temple offering at the end of the year. The temple offering, as you may remember, is for the upkeep of the building and that we are good stewards over what God has entrusted to us. So we want to encourage you to remember your pledge and to be prepared by the end of the year to make uh, your donation toward our temple uh, celebration offering for our building fund. And let's prepare to celebrate the hard work and the heart of our deacons and our clergy on Sunday, November 8th in the City of Life. It is Temple Celebration Sunday. Our Be The Light after school tutorial program will resume this fall on Zoom. Our Mercer University tutors are ready and will meet our students on Zoom. This is not the time for our students to fall behind. Let's keep them focused, let's keep them motivated, and let's keep them successful. Join the Be The Light after school tutorial program this fall on Zoom. For more information, contact Deacon Angela Atkins or email us at info at ULCCMacon. ULCC Seniors, Pastor would love to meet you on the prayer line every Wednesday from 12 to 12.30. This is a time to check in, spend time with Pastor in prayer and fellowship. Every Wednesday from 12 to 12.30 p.m., we are inviting our seniors. We love to call them the Incredibles of ULCC join pastor on the prayer line for a time of fellowship and prayer this Wednesday from 12 to 12 30 p.m. We're celebrating some special people with special days in the month of October starting with Amaria Johnson October 11 Deacon Sandra Newville the 13th Mother Ruby Woodson, the 13th, Morgan Pugh, also the 13th, Ashanti Griggs, the 15th, and closing out the month, Associate Pastor Michael Little. We salute the Christ in each of you, and we are glad you were born. We encourage you to participate in the following prayer opportunities throughout the week at ULCC.
Good morning and welcome to Universal. Greetings and welcome to Universal Light Christian Center. We are so glad that you have decided to worship with us. You could have been anywhere else, but you are here today. Right now, we're going to move into our prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to exalt your name and lift you up because there is so much that you have done for us, and we just want to say thank you. We ask that you allow us to be in your presence and in your presence alone. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you are going to do, that you have done, and that you have already done. Lord God, we ask that you speak to us through the words, the scripture, the songs, and the prayer that when we get to the end of this worship experience, we can declare that we will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to move into our exhortation. This is our time of call and response where you reply with, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. To him who alone doeth great wonders. To him who stretched out the earth among the waters. The sun to rule by day. The moon and the stars to rule by night. Who remembered us in our low estate and hath redeemed us from every one of our enemies. Who giveth food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Now we're going to move into our flag procession, where we exalt and lift up the name of the Most High God.
praise the Lord this morning. Listen, this is what we know for sure, that God is still the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, and he is still worthy of all of our praise. So why don't you just join in with us this morning, and let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. You are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, oh, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee, worthy, you are holy, we adore thee, none before thee. Worthy, worthy. Just clap those hands right. Just clap your hands right. Hallelujah. Let's take it up. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the great I am. Worthy, King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the great I am worthy King of kings and Lord of lords you are the great I am worthy King of kings and Lord of lords you are the great I am worthy Hallelujah Let's celebrate it Let's celebrate it Come on, let's take it up again. If I hit your testimony, go ahead and sing it with me. Lord, you saved me. You forgave me. You are faithful, worthy. Lord, you saved me. You forgave me. You are faithful, worthy. Lord, you saved me. You forgave me. You are faithful, worthy. Lord, you saved me, you forgave me, you are faithful, worthy. Hallelujah. Isn't he worthy today? Hallelujah. Come on, let's take it up one more time. Sing this one with me. Lord, you changed me, rearranged me. I'll never be the same. Lord, you change me, rearrange me. I'll never be the same. Worthy. Lord, you change me, rearrange me. I'll never be the same. Worthy. Lord, you change me, rearrange me. I'll never be the same. Now let's declare.
Hallelujah. Good morning. Our celebration scripture is Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 11, and verse 14 from the New International Version. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they put forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they have no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voices go, on, go out unto all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched forth a tent for the sun. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise and simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from a honeycomb. By them, your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. May these words of my mouth and the mes this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's prayer time. Therefore, God exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Father, we come before you this morning declaring this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together, God, and to declare you as our Lord, you as our God, you as our helper, you as our healer, you as our defender and our protector. We just thank you, God. We thank you for showing up in our lives and in our circumstances. 
And we thank you right now for the name of Jesus. And God, we praise you. That is that name that we exalt right now. We exalt that name over cancer. We exalt that name over diabetes. We exalt that name over COVID-19. We exalt that name over unemployment. We exalt that name over sickness and disease. We, we exalt that name over divorce and relationship issues. We exalt that name right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for the name. And we appropriate all of the power and all of the anointing that is in that name. In every area of our lives, we bless you for it. Precious name of Jesus, we thank you and we count it done now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Thank you, God, that there is a name. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So it is. So it is. So it is. So it is. In Jesus' name. understand that during this time there's something that we're all very concerned about we're very concerned about our families we're concerned about the well-being of our families the health of our families the safety of our families we're worried about if our families will have the jobs and the money to survive but the Bible tells us in Acts 16 and 31 it says believe in the Lord God and you shall be saved along with everyone in your household. When you sow in faith, you are covering everyone in your household. When you give to the household of God, you are covering your family. You are covering the well-being and the safety and the health and the finances of your family. So we want you to believe in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in his word and give and give generously to the household of God, knowing that he will provide for you. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory and that God will bless not just you, but your whole household, your whole family. So we want you to encourage, we want to encourage you to give this morning and to give in faith. Uh, we have several secure ways in which you can give. Uh, MoGive is our text giving platform where you can text dollar sign the amount and the, the text, the keyword, which is ULCC Macon, to 45777. We, you can also give through Cash App, dollar sign Universal Light. That's one word as well. Look for the orange U. And then you can give through uh, mail by uh, using the address that is on the screen. So we want to encourage you uh, to give this morning and prepare your, your gift to God. Uh, as we prepare to read our time of affirmation, our morning affirmations. And if you'd read with me together, this is our acknowledgement to God and our covering over our gifts to him. Let's declare this together. I profess this day unto the Lord God that I have come into the inheritance which the Lord swore to give me. I am in the land which you have provided for me, the kingdom of Almighty God. I was a sinner serving Satan. He was my God, but I called upon the name of Jesus and you heard my cry and delivered me into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus. As my Lord and high priest, I bring the first fruits of my income and my offerings to you and I worship the Lord my God with it. I rejoice in all the good which you have given to me and my household. I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that he has commanded me. Now look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless me as you said in your word. 
I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And so it is. Now let's go ahead and lift those devices and those methods which you give by which you give. And let's declare the blessing of the Lord over your household, over your family, over your income, over your health, over your well-being. And we declare that we are in good health. We are prospering even as our soul is prospering. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And so it is. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, saints. I'm so excited that you tuned in with us today. It means so much week after week to have this opportunity to come into your home and share the word of the Lord and worship with you. We don't take it for granted that you have chosen to be with us in this time of worship. So thank you once again for celebrating our God with us today. I want to go ahead and jump into the word for today, but as always, let's prepare with our affirmations. Hold your Bible up high and declare, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. My heart is open, fertile, and ready to receive the incorruptible seed of the living God and my life will be so much better after having heard the word of God. Amen. 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 Thank you once again for tuning in with us. You know over the last several weeks we've been looking at the valley of dry bones. We've been looking at that vision that the Lord showed to Ezekiel at a critical time in Israel's history. And I'd like to share that scripture with you this morning. Won't you read along with me? The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put my breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. 
and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I just love this passage. It's just, just, just the vision itself is so awesome. And, and I believe it's important that every now and then we do some self-reflecting. And we look at this valley. I think, uh, you know how, how today we, we focus quite a bit on preventive medicine. I think we need to go to the valley of the dry bones as a kind of prevention and as a safeguard against what can happen if we're not careful to stay focused on the Lord. Right now, I want to share the song with you that we've been using over the last few weeks. I've quoted the lyrics to the song, The Sound of Silence. And we'd like to share that with you right now to give you somewhat of an indication of what that song means.
Uh, I'm sure you saw some things in that song. You saw people. You saw perhaps movement. You may have seen some things that look normal, things that look familiar. And that's the thing about the Valley of Dry Bones. You see in this, in this account, God having to show Ezekiel a vision of the people he's been looking at all the time. He's not showing Ezekiel some foreign people. He's not showing them something that's way off somewhere. Or, or he's not uh, taking him to an area uh, where he's unfamiliar. He's showing Ezekiel what he sees every day. And can I say to you that it's possible to interact with people who are dry. It's possible to act, to interact with people, to spend time with people, to even share conversations with people who are dry bones. And this, I got to say this right here. This is why it's important that you try not to imitate other people. Because you're not always aware of the spirit you're taking on when you imitate others. And you could be taking on a dead spirit, a dry spirit, a, a spirit that is barely functioning, thinking that you're doing something impressive. Everybody has a, a, a game they play sometimes, a face they put on sometimes so that they can look a certain way to cover the pain. But it's not good for you to assume that the look is who they really are. God shows Ezekiel people he grew up with, people he has worshipped with, people he has interacted with and encountered all of his life. But he's also showing people who have become victims to their own words and who are victims to how they see themselves. It's interesting that he takes Ezekiel to a valley. He shows him a valley. And I want to take some time right now to just talk a little bit about that valley because it's in that valley that the dryness takes place. And every person, if you live, you keep on living. Old folks used to say that all the time. If you haven't been through some struggles, it's a keep on living. And, and sure enough, Jesus told us, in the world you will have tribulation. So at some point, you are going to experience some difficulties and challenges, and that's what we want to call the valley experience. What is the valley? The valley is nothing but a low place between two mountains or two hills. Why am I bringing this to your attention? I, I, I need you to know that we don't always live on the mountaintop, but we also don't always live in the valley, unless we decide to become arrested in the valley. Now let me make this clear about the valley being this place between two mountains or two hills. Your valley experience is something like this. It's the valley is like the sickness that takes place between the promotion on the job and the purchase of a new home. The valley experience is 
the loss of the job that takes place between the marriage and the new work, the new job. The valley experience is the miscarriage that takes place between the new car and the new uh, travel experience. The valley experience is, is that time, it's that, that experience, that occurrence that takes place between two good things, between two wonderful things, between two things that are working out well. The valley experience is that time, that, that, that interim place where we fall into circumstances. Uh, the Word of God talks about uh, falling, count it all joy when you fall into trials and tests. And that's, that's what being in the valley is about. It's a time that you've fallen into uh, undesirable circumstances. And what tends to happen in the valley, and, and, and I really want to talk about this to you because most people have this valley that just runs through their souls and they don't know how to get out of it. The valley is the place where you start to ask questions about what didn't work out. You, you're not on the mountaintop asking God, why did you do this? Why did this happen? You don't, you're not on the mountaintop asking God about what went wrong. But when you're in that valley experience, this is the place where you could possibly stay there long enough to dry up. Let's, let's just really, let's, let's look at it. What are some of the questions you've asked when you've gone through difficult times? Why did this happen to me? Why didn't this happen to my enemies? Why do I have to go through this? Where are you, God? God, why didn't you work this out? Why did you make me feel this? Why was I the one embarrassed? Why don't I ever have enough? Where are the people who are supposed to be there for me? Why? Does this have to last so long? When will this be over? We just, we just start to ask all these questions in the valley experience. And, and if you don't respond to those questions or if, if God doesn't give you an immediate answer and you end up just kind of going around in circles with that same thing over and over, just rolling around in your head. Those same questions keep emerging and you get arrested in the valley. I have some sisters and brothers in Christ who have been in the valley too long. I have some sisters and brothers in Christ who have been in the valley long enough that they have forgotten what it's like to be out. I've seen some sisters and brothers in Christ in the valley so long they have accepted this is just where I live. They've been in the valley so long They don't even stink anymore. And this is one of the reasons why you don't recognize the condition they're in. Because you're not picking up that scent, that stench from being stuck 
in a dead place. The valley is not an easy place to be in. The valley is the place where we struggle and it's the place where we end up having to confront what we really believe about God. What we need when we're in the valley is some medicine. And Proverbs 722 says this, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives up the bones. And some of us have had a broken spirit not broken through contriteness, but broken through disappointment, frustration, pain, humiliation, just things that just didn't work out. I've come to tell you today, you can have a merry heart even in the valley. And while in the valley, you can have this sense that I'm not by myself. God is in this valley with me, and I'm coming out of this. And I need you right now to declare that. I, I, I need everybody under the sound of my voice right now. If, you in, if you're in a valley experience, if you're in a difficult place in any area of your life, I don't want you to, to think that things are good on the job, so you're fine, but you've got these health issues, and that's where your valley is. I got, I'm in the valley right now concerning health issues, but my declaration is I'm coming out of this. And I need you to declare that right now. I'm coming out of this, whether you're in there due to sickness or, or bad relationships or financial issues or church hurt or whatever it is, I need you to declare right now, I'm coming out of this. This is not where I live. This is not my residence. I'm coming out of this. We should always have hope in our hearts. There's a scripture that we use uh, during funerals, but I, I just want to use it right now because it, it, it's right there where we need to be because all we're talking about is the grief that happens when we fall into frustration and disappointment and sorrow. It's that grief process. But the word of God says we don't grieve like those who have no hope. So whenever you're in a dark, low place, know, David said it, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, will fear no evil because thou art with me. The light of God will address any shadow in your life. So I need us be true to yourself. Tell yourself the truth about your condition. If you're struggling, and you've been struggling for a long time, if you've fallen into a difficult place and you've been there for a long time, I need you to remember, that's not where you live. It's always God's plan that we overcome difficulty. God is a winner. He's a champion. And he always wants us to come out victorious.
So I say to you today, if you're going through a, a difficult time, you're in a strange place, you've been in that valley, you need a merry heart. I'm not talking about liquor and I'm not talking about weed. You need a merry heart. And you need to learn how to have fun even in the valley. You need to learn how to enjoy every aspect of life. Like Paul said, I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to be high and I know how to be at my lowest place and I'm all right either way. That's actually how you take the sting out of falling into difficult times. So those of you who are listening to me today, and you've, you know you've, you've, you've gotten into that valley situation and you've just settled in and you're just there and, and you don't even remember what it's like to see daylight because you've been dry so long. I want you to open your heart today and allow the Spirit of God to come in to your heart. And as God comes in, he's coming in with his word. And, and the word of prophecy that we receive today concerning these dry bones, and you will live, and you will live, and you will live. And say that right now, and I will live, and I will live. And I will live and speak it concerning your children and your spouse and your, your co-workers and your family members. And you will live. And you will live. And you will live. Speak that. It should flow out of your mouth every day. That you embrace life even in a difficult place. If you're listening to me today and you've accepted the Lord before but you dried up in the valley of disappointment. I want you to come back to the Lord today, to open your heart and allow his breath to refresh and revive you. And you will live, and you will live, and you will live. God wants to open us all up to a new experience in him. He has something so awesome for us. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly, and you will live. That's what he's saying. And he's talking about really living. He's not talking about those who are just out who have fallen into the silence of dry bones. There's a sound coming. And God wants us to be ready to receive the life of his promise. And you will live. And you will live. And you will live. Pray this after me. Say, Father, we praise you and we thank you for being our God. We thank you for the life of Jesus Christ, for all that he's done for us. Now, God, we invite Jesus in, not just to be there, but to take full control of our lives and circumstances. We thank you, God, for the resurrection power that is now resting upon us. Thank you for the new life that has come to us. The freshness of the breath of God that now breathes on us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And so it is. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in with us once again. It's always, it's our joy and our pleasure and our prayer to make a difference in your life through something we say or do.
Before we dismiss, let me again remind you that it's voting season. Please check the area where you live to see whether early voting has opened yet. If it has, be sure that you let your voice be heard. This is one of the most important elections in our generation. Everything can change. America as we know it can change if we don't let our voices be heard. So please, I admonish you to get out, to vote, to encourage your family and friends and coworkers, your neighbors, anybody you come in contact with. Ask them, have they voted? If they say no, ask, are they planning to vote? And make sure you encourage everyone you can to go to the polls. Don't, uh, I don't suggest mailing in your ballots, but that you should deliver them to be sure that the process is the way it should be. So please don't take this for granted. Make it your business to get out and vote. For those of you who live in uh, the Macon Bib area, voting begins here on Monday morning. So please make your way to the station so that you can cast your vote. With that said, we're about to pray the prayer for protection and offer the benediction and release you into your day. Come on, Kevin, let's share the prayer for protection. Will everyone please repeat after me? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, physically, God is. Wherever we are, Emotionally, God is. And wherever we are, spiritually, God is. Now lift those hands and receive the blessing of the Lord. In your day of trouble, may the Lord be with you. May the God of Jacob keep you from all harm. Send you away from his sanctuary in Zion. Remember with pleasure the gifts you've given him the sacrifices and offerings. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May there be shouts of joy when we hear the news of your victory. Flags flying with praise to God for all he's done for you. And he promised to answer all your prayers. And remember, you are the light of the world. If you have prayed the prayer of faith today with Pastor, or if you are in need of prayer, we want to connect with you. We invite you to visit our website at ulccmacon.org. You may also leave a voicemail or an email, info at ulccmacon.org. We hope that you have been uplifted and enlightened through our worship celebration this morning, and we are confident that you will never be the same again. To know more about us, visit our website, ulccmacon.org. Thank you for worshiping with Universal Light Christian Center, the city of light. <laughs>